In this second video we will create and add belts between the gears and the motors. To begin, right click on the T-brace and hide it for a better view. Before creating the belt, let's define a plane where we want to place it. Click on Reference Geometry and select Plane. Then select both sides of the gear from the motor as follows. To add the belt between the wheel and the motor, you can use an assembly feature called Belt Chain. Select the line that defines the circle on the motor's gear and a face on the wheel's gear. Select the plane we created for the belt location plane and make sure Engage Belt is not checked. Then check Create Belt part and click OK. At this moment you can leave the belt as it is, but for visual purposes we will actually create the physical part. The belt feature appears in the feature manager and it has a sketch and a part. If prompted to save the belt, save it internally. Right click and open the part and observe the sketch. It is derived because it depends on the assembly. In order to create the physical belt, start a sketch on the front plane and draw a circle with a diameter of 0.14 inches, centered at the point of tangency. Extruded mid plane with a depth of 0.5 inches. Next, start a sketch on the front end of the cylinder you've just created and draw four circles and two construction lines as follows. Right click one of the lines and select midpoint. Hold the control key down and select the other line. Add a midpoint relation between the two. Holding control down, select two opposing circles. Then add an equal relation. Do the same for the other pair. Next, add tangent relations between each two adjacent circles. Click on the Trim Entities tool and, using Trim to Closest, remove the following lines. Using Smart Dimension, give the arcs radii of 0.14 and 0.43 inches. Note that you only need to dimension one of each since you added the equal relations. Set the length of the following line to 1.05 inches, making sure it's not a vertical dimension. Go to the Features tab and select Extruded Boss. For the start condition, add an offset of 0.03 inches. And for the end condition, select Blind and put a depth of 0.05 inches. If necessary, reverse the directions of the offset and of the extrude to obtain the following result. Start a new sketch on the front end of the initial cylinder and create another equal circle concentric with the left arc of the feature we've just created. Use Extrude Boss, select Up to Surface for the end condition and click on the back surface of the cylinder. Click OK. Now start a new sketch on the back side of the second feature. Use the same geometry that you used in the other sketch, but translate it so that the right circle is concentric with the left arc of the previous sketch. Use Extruded Boss and in the start condition add an offset of 0.03 inches. Keep the depth of 0.05 inches and click OK. Now select Mirror Components and mirror everything about the front plane. Make sure you check Geometry Pattern from the options available. It is now time to create a curve-driven pattern. Select the Curve sketch from the Flying Feature Manager and select the Mirror feature for Features to Pattern. Add 54 instances with equal spacing and check the Transform Curve, Tangent to Curve and Geometry Pattern boxes. Save the part and close it. 
You can hide the visible sketches from the Feature Manager if you want. Then right-click Collapse Items. Repeat the steps to create the belt for the back wheel. For the other two wheels, go to Insert, Mirror Components and select the plane created in the chassis for the mirror plane. Then select the two belts for components to mirror and click OK. We couldn't have used mirror to create the second belt from the first one because they are offset. Show the T-braces from the Feature Manager. In the next video, we will create a component in the context of the assembly and we will add the remaining parts.